Going over IRS Form 8995, the Qualified Business Income Deduction Simplified Computation. So the first thing that we should cover is Qualified Business Income and whether you should use Form 8995 or 8995-A, which is the Qualified Business Income Deduction. You may take, you may use Form 8995 to determine your qualified business income deduction if the following apply. One, you have qualified business income, qualified REIT dividends, or qualified PTP income or loss. Also, if your taxable income before the QBI deduction is less than or equal to $170,050 for taxpayers who are single, married filing separately, head of household, qualifying survivor spouse, or trusts and estates, or for joint filers, $340,100. And finally, if you are not a patron in a specified agricultural or horticultural cooperative. If all of those three things apply, you may use Form 8995 Simplified Computation to determine your QBI deduction. If one or more of those conditions does not apply, then you must use Form 8995A to determine your QBI deduction. Form 8995 is a one-page document. We'll go through each of these lines step by step. If you want to learn more about what qualified business income is, uh, what qualified REIT dividends are, publicly traded partnership income, or domestic production activities deduction, uh, you may check out our article where we've written a little bit more in depth about each of these things. Simply go to teachmepersonalfinance.com, type in IRS Form 8995. You should, appear, you should find both an article on this form as well as Form 8995A, which is the standard QBI deduction form. So in line one, you will annotate each trade, business, or aggregation name in column A, taxpayer identification number, and then the qualified business income or loss. If you aggregated trades or businesses, you must attach Schedule B from Form 8995A or a similar schedule. On line 1B, you'll enter the employer's identification number. If there is not an employer identification number, then you may use your Social Security number or individual taxpayer identification number. If you're the sole owner of an LLC that is not treated as a separate entity for federal tax purposes, enter the EIN that was given to the LLC. In line 1C, do not include any losses or deductions suspended from use in calculating taxable income in the current year or any portion of qualified losses or deductions previously suspended by other code provisions that are allowed in calculating taxable income. For line two, you will combine lines one, one through one five in column C. You will enter the total in line two. If you had more than five trades or businesses then attach a statement with the name, taxpayer identification number of those additional trades or businesses and include the income and loss from those trades or businesses in the total that you enter into line two. For line three, you'll include the qualified portion of 
trade or business loss carry forward that was allowed in calculating taxable income in the current year, even if that loss was from a trade or a business no longer in existence. Line four, you'll enter your total qualified business income by combining lines two and three. If this number is zero or less, then enter zero. If, if you have a qualified business net loss for the year, you don't qualify for the QBI deduction unless you have REIT dividends that are qualified or publicly traded partnership income. The loss will be carried forward to next year, but the carry forward does not affect the deductibility of the loss for purposes of any other provisions of the tax code. In line five, you'll enter, you'll multiply line four by 20%. This represents the qualified business income component of your deduction. In line six, you'll enter qualified REIT dividends in publicly traded partnership income or loss. You'll enter income as a positive number and losses as a negative number. For line seven, You'll enter any carry forward of qualified REIT dividends and qualified PTP losses from the prior tax year. Even if the, you will include the qualified portion of a PTP loss carry forward, even if the loss was from a PTP that you no longer hold an interest in or is no longer in existence. For line eight, you will combine lines six and seven. If this results in a number of zero or less, enter zero. Any negative amounts will be carried forward to the next year. For line nine, you'll multiply the number in line eight by 20%. This represents the REIT and PTP component of your QBI deduction. For line 10, you'll add the QBI component as well as the REIT and PTP component in lines five and nine to arrive at your qualified business income deduction before income limitation. For line 11, you'll include your taxable income before your QBI deduction. According to the form instructions, your taxable income should come from one of the following. For form 1040, 1040SR, or 1040 in our filers, you will find your taxable income on line 11 minus the number that is on line 12. For form 1041 filers, you will find this number as the result of line 23 on your form 1041 plus line 20 on your form 1041. For form 1041 dash in filers, this number is line 13 plus qualified in income deduction reported on line 9. For form 990T filers, you will find this as the result of line 11 part 1 plus line 9 part 1. And finally, for the S corporation portion of ESBT filers, you will need to use the ESBT tax worksheet, line 13 plus line 11 from the ESBT tax worksheet. For line 12, you'll enter net capital gain. This, depending on your tax return, you'll find this amount on 1040, 1040 SR, or 1040 NR as line 3A plus your net capital gain. On form 1041, this will be line 2B2 plus your net capital gain. For all other tax filers, please see the form instructions. In line 13, you'll subtract line 12 from line 11. If this results in a number of zero or less, enter zero. For line 14, you'll multiply the number in line 13 by 20%. This represents your income limitation. On line 15, 
you'll enter the smaller of either line 10 or line 14. This represents your qualified business income deduction. You will also enter this amount on the applicable line of your tax return. For Form 1040 or 1040 SR filers, this would be line 13. For Form 1040 NR filers, this would be line 13A. If you're filing Form 1041, line 20. Form 1041-N, line 9. Form 990T, line 9. And S Corporation portion of an ESBT, line 11. In line 16, you'll enter the total qualified business loss carry forward by combining lines 2 and 3. If this is greater than 0, then enter 0. This is the amount that will be carried forward to the next year. And this will offset QBI in later tax years regardless of whether the trades or businesses that generated the loss are still in existence. For line 17, this is the qualified, the total qualified REIT dividends and PTP loss carry forward. You'll combine lines 6 and 7, and if this is greater than 0, you'll enter 0. The form instructions do contain a QBI flowchart if you need to determine whether an item of income, gain, deduction, or loss is included in QBI. This completes our review of IRS Form 8995 uh, Simplified Computation. If you uh, want to read step-by-step -step instructions, we've written an article. Simply go to teachmepersonalfinance.com, type in IRS Form 8995, and you will find this article in, 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 our, uh, in our website. If you like our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you like our articles, please subscribe to our newsletter. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please post them in the comment section. Thank you.